Hello Photo Tuts. this is Travis King back with another Adobe Camera Raw tutorial. We're going to look today at another one of the sliders or one of the tabs for Adobe Camera Raw and that is the detail tool and the way that we can use that to, to add some sharpening and reduce some of the noise in some of our photos and all the fun things that the detail tool does. Now in our first photo that we have up here I'm going to show you uh, the reason why we need the detail tool a lot of times and um, Pretty much every picture we take could use, usually use a little bit of sharpening and a little bit of noise reduction. This is especially true when you're shooting on photos. You're shooting your photos with a high ISO. So if it's dark out, and, uh, such as this picture is here, and you're taking a photo outside, um, and perhaps you don't have a tripod so you can't leave your shutter open long enough to really capture all the light, uh, you take a picture with a high ISO and that leads to quite a bit of color noise. So for example here we have an ISO of 1600 which is pretty high and even though the, uh, we'll fit this in view here, even though you can't see it probably very well on the uh, the screencast here, you may notice that, that you can tell there's some noise here in the sky and there's, uh, there's going to be some problems with noise so we're going to have to look at how to get rid of that. In fact let's go into 100% here and we'll just zoom up into the sky and we'll see even at 100 percent we're noticing a little bit of pattern uh, developing uh, and a little bit of noise uh, happening here in the sky because of the high ISO so let's go over into our detail tab which is our third tab here it looks like a couple of different little triangles there uh, and this will do the sharpening and the noise reduction uh, will be through here so for this picture we're just going to concentrate on the uh, first of all the noise reduction in the luminance and the color channel now the luminance noise reduction is gets rid of um, the grainy pattern that you see. Let me zoom in here. If you look here in the sky you see a, a definite grainy pattern that's happening uh, throughout the picture here in the sky. So luminance uh, filter slider is going to get rid of that and that happens again as mentioned when you have some high ISO usually in the sky you develop this grain. Now the color uh, is going to get rid of uh, color speckles um, or patterns of color sparkles that happen uh, randomly through the picture. This doesn't happen quite as often as a luminance but uh, it does happen. I don't know if you'll be able to see here or not but uh, let's see if I can zoom in a bit further. We're having a little bit of color speckling going on here. In fact if I go over and let's just increase some of the fill light here so you can actually see a little bit more what's going on. You'll see there's some going to be some color speckling that's happening here. Now of course we're not going to keep the fill light that high to start but you'll get an idea so let's go back to the detailed panel here and let's go back up to the sky where we can really see this uh, speckling happening here so if we increase our luminance we're gonna see right away what happens is we're starting to bring out some of that noise now instead of having all that pattern in the sky we're getting more blue and straight colors and a nicer gradient in the sky so if we look at our before picture and look at our after we can see how it smoothed that out uh, quite significantly. Now when you do adjust this luminance and even the color uh, sliders here it does take out some of the sharpness on the rest of the picture so you're usually going to use these sliders uh, hand in hand with your sharpening slider as well. Let's go down a little bit lower here to where that color uh, problem was happening. I'm going to increase again the fill light just so we can see what's going on here, how the color works that's a lot of it there so that you, you of course wouldn't have that much fill light in here but if we look at our color I don't know if you'll be able to see or not, let me put the luminance down a little bit more but you're going to see in the, here we are now we have a lot of color pattern that's available so if your picture looks something like this which would probably be able to delete the picture because it's not worth saving but if it did this is where you'll see the color slider will take some of that out so if we look at our before um, sorry or before and after we can notice a little bit of, of speckling from the color sort of disappearing. Now color slider again it's not going to be used as much less is often more in the color slider. The luminance slider is going to be your workhorse here. Uh, so if we go back and take out the fill light it's going to take out some of the patterns uh, in the sky there. Now in our actual 100% view you're not really going to notice that you've done a whole lot. Your before and after preview is probably not going to go um, probably not going to see much of a difference. That's why you always sort of want to, if you can, go into about 100% when you're doing your adjustments because this is where you're really going to see uh, what you're doing. So your befores and your afters will be will be better. Now again, because of the screencast and the low quality uh, that the screencast comes out as, you probably won't notice this a whole lot. But trust me, 
the luminous slider is wonderful for getting rid of those those uh, patterns in the sky and the color slider is going to be used for getting rid of those pattern colored sparkles that uh, will sometimes uh, appear in photos with uh, high ISO. Now we're going to another photo here, an architectural shot, a nice one here of Las Vegas. We'll show you a little bit more uh, sharpening, the sharpening uh, tools as well. And this is uh, this is going to be good for architectural shots and, and again any picture that you need to sharpen up a bit. And most pictures and most photos could do with a little sharpening. So let's zoom in here to a section here. Now the really handy tool for using this particular sharpening tool is to hold down the option key on the Mac or the alt key on the PC and as you hold those down and drag these sliders you're going to notice something very interesting happening now sometimes what will happen though is when you when you do that nothing will happen and you're wondering what happened to this tool it's because a lot of times it will only work when you're in a hundred percent view so let's get into that and I'll show you so if you hold down alt or option on the Mac and then we hit our overall sharpening amount what's going to happen is going to turn into a gray scale which uh, allows you to see more detail of exactly what's going on here kind of eliminate some of the color uh, so that you can see exactly what's going on. So if we put our amount all the way to the top, we can see what happens. We put it all the way down to the bottom. You see that uh, the picture is more fuzzy and at the top, of course, it sharpens everything up. Now you're not going to use that much sharpening, but you get an idea of what this does. It's just the overall sharpness of the picture. Now the radius tool works the exact same way if you hold down the alt or option key. And when you do that, it brings up your overlay here. So the most radius kind of uh, bulges out from the edges and the least radius keeps it very tight. It almost makes the picture disappear. So you're, you're not, you're keeping it uh, f fairly tight in there. You're sharpening and your most, you're sort of expanding it from the edges. So we'll leave our radius. Usually with architectural pictures, there's lots of nice lines in there. So you don't really have to have a very high radius. And our detail, this is sort of self-explanatory. This is going to add overall detail to the picture. So you'll see a lot of these windows are starting to pop out and the Eiffel Tower um, copy there is starting to pop out a little bit more. If we go down to detail to the lowest, again, it takes most of the detail out of the picture. Now our masking tool, this is the most noticeable one when you do this and hold down the Alt or Option key. And what this does is it limits the sharpening to specific areas. So areas that are black means that there's no sharpening happening. Areas that are white, that's where the sharpening happens. So as you go up to the very top, it in this case, would be doing uh, just through the windows would be getting the sharpening and nothing else. If As you go down, it sort of broadens it out to more uh, sharpening in the overall picture. So because we want uh, maybe a little bit of sharpening, we'll keep our mask higher there. And again, I don't know if you'll see much here in the before and after picture, but you'll see there's a little bit blurry here and we've kind of sharpened up the edges somewhat. Now you do have to be careful with sharpening that you don't overdo it because uh, people think that if every picture can look better when it's sharp, sometimes we tend to overdo the sharpening, that, that more is better. And, and that's not the case because as you increase your sharpening, uh, your picture uh, can develop fringes or haloing around the edges, which looks really nasty. So as you go in, and if you were bringing in too much sharpening overall and uh, and your radius was, was increasing and your detail was increasing and you were just keep pushing and pushing, soon your picture's starting going to start to have lines here around the edges. It's starting to look more like a painting than a photo. So, for example, let's do a before and after. Now, after is very sharp, but look at that. Like, I mean, your the Eiffel Tower looks like somebody painted it on. And if you go into the 100% view, might be able to see it a little bit better here. So there's your before, that looks like a photograph. And then your after, now it kind of looks more uh, like a picture. Everything is a little bit f too flat. So just be careful, uh, do your sharpening at 100% view and then zoom in uh, to make sure that you're not having any fringing or haloing around the edges. Uh, so you don't want to overdo it. Uh, so the amount you want to keep down, your radius, you can lower that down, your detail, nice to keep some of the detail in the stones works there and your masking let's kind of share the love there and uh, spread it around so there's your before and there's your after so you just see a little bit more definition uh, in this in those windows and then you go into 100 percent if you were doing the, going to sharpen in the fit in view mode you would notice quite quickly that as you worked with your sliders you might even not notice anything's happening so you'd end up saying okay i just need more sharpening more sharpening more sharpening you did your before and after and you say okay what am I doing I'm 
nothing's happening. That's why you want to do it in your 100% mode and closer so that you can really see what's going on in the background so that your befores and afters are much more noticeable. There's your before and there's your after. So now you know, look, okay, I'm starting to get some fringing here in this in the areas where there's light. Uh, that's That's way too much. So, luminance is going to get rid of the grain in the sky usually. Uh, the, color the color slider is going to get rid of noise that's uh, colored sparkles throughout your picture. And then your sharpening is going to adjust to, uh, or constrain your sharpening to certain areas of the picture. And again, that tool is hold down Alt or hold down Option uh, key and it'll give you that overall preview, which will be really handy to see exactly what's going on in your photo. Take out some of the mystery. Of, uh, of what's happening. So that is the details slider in Adobe Camera Raw. Thank you.